welcome to the new series which is teaching point series we will see some cases we will observe record the findings and we will try to learn the teaching points from those cases first case 26 year male with history of seizures gtcs since 15 days and cannabis addict you can see there is a hype t2 hyper intense ring like lesion with adjacent perlesional vasogenic edema noted in right superior frontal parietal lobe convexity there is restricted diffusion and dw in the core which is low on adc on av contrast there are conglomerate ring enhancing lesions noted in right superior frontal parietal lobe convexity and here this is the video you can see this is the conglomerate ring enhancing lesions but here there is the on the on av contrast you can see this image which has a typical peri contrast or perilesional leakage this perilesional contrast leakage is a teaching point here this perilesional contrast leakage is specific for ncc than tuberculomas so what is this perilesional contrast leakage thanks to dr manisha joshi for contributing this case so the teaching point is generally the t2 hyperintense ring like lesions with perlesional edema central hyperintensity with restricted diffusion on dwi eccentric hypointense rim favor ncc or tuberculoma however there is no scolex noted in the lesion in this case and there are solitary conglomerate ring enhancing lesions noted on post contrast images generally we have a dictum that conglomerate ring enhancing lesions are common in tuberculomas than ncc but conglomerate ring enhancing lesions can also occur in ncc the teaching point in this case is the perilesional contrast leakage around the ring enhancing lesion this is the perilesional contrast leakage around the ring enhancing lesion which you should remember which favors ncc over tuberculoma and recently there is a poster which was presented in asnr this also shows the importance of role of perilesional contrast leakage around ring enhancing lesions in differentiating ncc from tuberculoma so this is also a right frontal ncc you can see there is a t2 hyperintense lesion with adjacent perilesional vasogenic edema you can see typical perilesional contrast leakage adjacent to the conglomerate ring enhancing lesions this was a case of ncc next case 46 year male with abdominal pain vomiting and constipation you can see this is the plain radiograph you can see this is the dilated transverse colon even the splenic flexure and descending colon but there is abrupt cut off at the level of descending colon and the rest of the sigmoid colon rectum rectal gastrode is not visualized so this is classical of colon cut off sign generally we have a notion or dictum that colon cut off sign is most of the times are only seen in acute pancreatitis but here this case is shown we will see the ct images of this case here the ct images of this case typically show there is a con concentric circumferential lesion noted in the descending colon here you can see this is a circumferential concentric constricting lesion which is causing narrowing at the descending colon with retrograde dilatation so we have so this is also a colon cut off sign but it is seen in a case of malignancy so this was colonoscopic guided biopsy was done from this case and this was proved to be a colon carcinoma of the colon so thanks to dr veel nemetal asar for contributing this case so the colon cut off sign describes gastric distension seen in the proximal colon associated with abrupt termination of gas within the colon usually at the level of splenic flexure but here the colon cut off sign is seen at the level of descending colon normally it is most commonly seen in acute pancreatitis which results from inflammatory process extending from the pancreas into the phrenic phrenic colic ligament via the transverse mesocolon so, but the teaching point here is colon cut off sign is also seen in carcinoma of colon as we have seen in this case and the colon cut off sign can be also seen in inflammatory bowel disease in mesenteric ischemia abdominal aortic aneurysm or rupture and even in stomach tumors next case 56 year male with severe back pain weakness of lower limbs and bladder incontinence you can see there is significant ligamental flavel thickening you can see this is the sig significant ligamental flavel thickening causing compression of the thecal sac and spinal canal narrowing and also you can see there are t2 oblique t2 hyperintensity is noted in the spinal cord at that level suggestive of cord edema or compressive myelopathy this is a straight forward case why should i present this straight forward case there is a reason for showing this case because generally 
most of the times we will observe ligamental flavor thickenings at multiple levels here also in this case you can see there is ligamental flavor thickenings at multiple even thoracic spine but this is you can see this is a t10 t11 level so the ligamental flavor thickening is most of the times involves in the thoracic region at t10 t11 level next time when you report the cases you observe t ligamental flavor thickening will be most common at t10 t11 level so this is the observation and we will see why it occurs only at t10 t11 level so this is ligamental flavor thickening so ligamental flavor thickening does not appear to have any side or sex predominance LF thickening has a predominant tendency to occur specifically at T10 T11 level which may be due to maximum tensile strength because of maximum tensile strength at this level ligamental level thickening most commonly occurs at T10 T11 level and even cord edema or compressive myelopathy is also occurs at T10 T11 level so remember hence ligamental level thickening at T10 T level may be used as a reference point for counting the vertebral levels whenever you are in confusion you can also take ligamental level thickening as a reference for counting so this is the journal you can see dorsal spinal ligamental level thickening here you can see there is a maximum propensity that is mean standard deviation is highest at the level of t10 t11 level so this is analysis of mean ligamental level thickening for the entire dorsal liver showed a significant increase of p level at t10 t11 level next case 24 year female with history of 6 months of amenorrhea came for anc the even the cervical this is the thoracic spine this is the cervical spine thoracic spine these are the sagittal sections and however when you see in the caudal sections in the lumbosacral junction there is a altered alignment of the posterior elements in the lower lumbosacral junction here you can see this is the altered alignment this is the axial sections you can see these are the three point discrimination this three point discrimination is lost at this level and so even in the here also you can see this is the coronal plane and the posterior elements these are the normal posterior elements but there is this is the abnormal posterior element or alignment in the lower lumbosacral spine so this is a classical case of vertebral segmentation anomaly so what is the teaching point in it vertebral segmentation anomalies are seen or seen even on sagittal and axial images but not as clearly as in coronal planes because coronal planes help us to compare the symmetry of vertebra on both halves so coronal planes are the best planes to diagnose vertebral segmentation anomalies that is hemi vertebra or block vertebra than sagittal and axial planes as seen in this case next case 26 year female with mental retardation and chronic seizures you can see there is a CSS signature cystic lesion noted in the retrocerebral location on right side seen communicating with the fourth ventricle with hyperplasia of the vermis suggestive of dandivac or malformation and also you can see there is abnormal dilatation of the atrium and occipital of bilateral lateral ventricles that is typical colpocephaly or teardrop configuration you can see there is widened frontal horns typically mimicking wicking helmet sign also you can see the sagittal section there is complete agencies of the carpus callosum the carpus callosum should be seen like this the carpus callosum is completely absent and the gyri are seen radiating away from the Sentry center typically resembling the sunburst or sunray appearance, and you can also see the there is the absence of the pericallosal artery. Uh, and here you can see these are the coronal sections, but in the subependymal location, you can see some nodular heterotopic gray matter. Apart from dandivaca malformation and carpus callosalis, you can also see nodular heterotopic gray matter in the subependymal location of bilateral ventricles. And this is the T1 weighted sequence. This is the T1 spin neck weighted sequence. Here, the nodular heterotopic gray matter are not clearly seen. But what is this image? Why this image is kept? You can see this is the T1 inversion recovery sequence, which clearly depicts the nodular heterotopic gray matter. So, T1 inversion recovery sequence typically increases the contrast between the gray matter and white matter and helps in diagnosing cortical migration anomalies better than T1 spin echo sequence. So the teaching point is T1 inversion recovery sequence should be taken whenever you suspect cortical migration anomalies. Here you can see this is, these are the nodular heterotopic gray matter. Here also you can see these are the nodular heterotopic gray matter in subependable location in bilateral lateral ventricles which are better depicted in T1 inversion recovery sequence than T1 spin echo sequence. So this is the teaching point that T1 inversion recovery sequence better depicted heterotopic subependable sub heterotopic nodular gray matter in subependable location of bilateral lateral ventricles than T1 spin echo sequence and this is the journal that is MR imaging of neural migration disorders here also you see that is T1 you can see inversion recovery images are superior than T1 spin echo images thank you all